Okay. Tanya. Coffee with Tanya. Welcome, Mika. Welcome. How are you? Thank you, Tanya. I'm good. Thanks a lot. Uh, such an amazing opportunity to kind of introduce of myself to your, your, your address right there. So thank you so much for this. Oh, well, thank you for joining me because it, um, it's been for a couple of years now that we were having a coffee at the Taste of Colombia all the time, once a month or twice a month, depends on how busy we are or how much we want to see each other. <laughs> exactly. I missed all those days. I hope everything's going to finish so soon and we're going to go back to Coffee Colombia because it was an amazing. We had an amazing time. I yes, indeed. I, I hope to have a Yuri on uh, one of my Zoom calls, uh, Coffee with Tanya as well, because I miss her too. <laughs> exactly. And then his coffee, like the, the coffee that I'm making is amazing. So you remember the last time they have a coffee with uh, some new, uh, with the whiskey inside and bay leaves and they were mixing it up and stuff like that? They were, they were pretty good. They were pretty tasty. I'm kind of like, I'm looking forward to it. To go back yeah, that's and and they had a special on friday night especially when we have a coffee with tanya and so that was that was great we i i tried one that it was um coffee wine with coffee actually nice that was, that was interesting <laughs> yeah you see there is a lot of things to try over there we missed a lot i i agree i agree but we'll catch up soon <laughs> definitely definitely we have to go back yeah well i missed you i missed you at the to see you in person, but however, this is this is great opportunity. Thanks to technology, we can have a coffee online. <laughs> Definitely, yes, I will enjoy this. There you go, number one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, how how is your um, COVID nineteen life? Tell me. Oh my goodness, COVID nineteen <laughs> life. Um, where should I start? I would say um, fighting with the kids. I have a fight nights. Then I have entertainment nights. I don't know where I'm. Where I'm pretty much standing with entertainment because I lost all my ideas, pretty much. Uh, I have uh, work, which has come to the third place because after fighting, entertaining, and the work is the third, and then we have the marriage life, pretty much that's all we have these days. So <laughs> it's not, a, I would say, not easy, but we are going through, so we're, we're okay. So I heard that you gain a new skill, and that is giving a kid's haircut in a bathtub. Oh, definitely. Correct. <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, one day who, who we woke hates up. You, who hates you more, kids or your wife? <laughs> exactly. So it's easy for me because I kind of shake every, like, every second day. So I'm a moment okay in this case. Um, I was not sure. Should I say lucky this time of the year or, like, or not lucky? Most <laughs> I guess I'm lucky now. So <laughs> I don't think it's better. Uh, but uh, the kids woke up one morning and then uh, I was sitting down and watching it was, it was, it was Sunday night. And he, he got up from the bed and I'm looking at him and I was like, come on, this is like a cave kid I'm coming in the house. His bro was like, like, his hair was like this and uh, all messed up because we just woke up. I was like, you know what, that's it. This is it, this is the trigger. I'm, I'm taking to the bath tonight and I'm gonna just shave it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I give them a haircut and it was, it was good. They turned out good. We should, we should have a we should have uh, pictures to see, you know, before and after, so. Oh, my wife goes, no, no, don't, don't show them anybody. You're lucky you're staying home, so no one sees them. <laughs> They're like the little soldiers. They have the cut up like this. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> you know, it's been a month from now. The time is coming for the new one. So when the new comes, <laughs> I'll show you for the new one. So maybe I can do a live video, you know, cutting, cutting their hair. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I actually had a coffee with Tanya with my hairdressers from Kativa Salon in Burlington. And when I talked to them and I said, you know what, we're in challenging times because all salons are closed. So what is your advice? What to do? And she says, just don't do anything because if you're a blonde and you buy the, the color in the shopper's drug mart and try to do yourself, you're going to be orange or you cut your bangs, you're going to just, you know, ruin yourself. So just don't do anything. We all have a bad hair days. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, anyway, we have, so far they're good. They're not going anywhere. They don't go to school. They don't go to the parks. The parks are closed. No other kids, no entertainment. So, anyway, thumbs up. They're good. They can stay at home. The only thing that I are seeing, it's me and my wife. That's all. So, I, say, so, all right. so I hope that after, if this doesn't take too long, that you're going to gain your skill of, of cu cutting hairs and then we see you opening a hair salon sometime soon. <laughs> I wish I could do that. 
<laughs> you know what? I think I think you should just focus back on your mortgages because that's what you do the best. And uh, that's why I hang out with you all the time, getting information regarding what's going on. I know usually every conversation between you and me is like, you ask me, Tanya, what's going on in market? And my question is, Iko, what's going on with board bro with the yes, yeah. mortgages? Yes. So my question, what is going on with, with mortgages? I, I heard from you uh, that it was some challenging or interesting time around it. So tell me about it more. It was, it was. Um, we're kind of coming back to normal right now, but we went through a turbulent period of time, uh, especially at the beginning when all of this started, I would say. Uh, beginning of March and then, um, you know, the first um, first couple of weeks in April. So um, <clears throat> I think the government did a great job, you know, with how they handled the whole situation. Uh, that when they introduced the deferral, when, when everything started at the beginning, they introduced, um, the government came back, so listen, you can defer your mortgages to all the clients uh, for six period of six months or whatever you need. So having said that, Pretty much, I don't know why, but there was a, such a big, uh, I would say, dilemma with, uh, with pretty much everyone, saying that they were thinking that, you know what, with, for these different mortgages, we can pretty much stop paying and pause everything and wait for six months and we're gonna start paying after six months. And they thought, you know what, maybe I'm gonna stop paying and save and see what happens. It was very, very uncertain, like it was uncertain times where like, people don't know what to expect. So, so you're saying that it was actually either miscommunication or it was bad interpretation of what the deferral of mortgages means in the beginning. Exactly. So, okay. So this is the thing. So it's not a miscommunication from the government. Correct. The government used the right terms to say, listen, now you're going to have uh, options to defer your mortgages. And that was it. Okay. Uh, now, it's not about the government to educate the clients. It's uh, the clients to educate themselves what deferred mortgage means. It pretty much is not even the clients to actually to educate themselves. It's the lenders who are holding their mortgages to come up and say, listen, this is the foreign mortgage it means, and this is how we're calculating, and this is what's going to happen after five, three, four, five, or six months from now when you actually start paying your mortgage. Correct. Uh, every lender has a different way how to calculate it. So it's not uh, something that you're going to, it's a general rule to everybody. It's pretty much, it's every, every bank has a different ways how they're doing this stuff. So it all depends on which bank you have your mortgage with. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, so what I will say is uh, the biggest uh, misconceptions um, about the whole thing was that people thought that all of the federal mortgages was like, we're going to stop paying, <clears throat> we're going to catch up after six months. <laughs> And we yeah. That's it. Wake you know, up, up, wake up, don't dream too much. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, live for free for six months, you're okay, we're coming back, and then we'll start paying after six months, you're good to go. And we do the savings. And uh, I have a couple of clients of mine, they were pretty much in good standing. They go, you know what, we're going to stop paying, we're going to defer our mortgages and, uh, you know, save some money, maybe we go for, to Europe you know, in the summertime. I was like, come on, you can't go anywhere, the borders are closed. <laughs> We're not flying anywhere anytime this this time of the year, but um, deferring a mortgage is bad, bad idea. So we started explaining. Unless what, unless you really have to, I, unless you you don't have any other choice, is that correct? Unless you have another choice, exactly. So this was meant for the people who actually lost their jobs, and I feel really bad for them. So the people who actually need it, that really need it to, to to kind of stop paying because they have no income where to come from. I would say, you know what, you're in a bad position. Defer the mortgage. No matter what happens, you know, I just really hope that after five, six months, you're going to go back to where you'll find a new job or whatever. But just, you know, stop the mortgage to try sort of pretty much survive at this point of time. Correct. And then two weeks, uh, two weeks after the government said you can defer the mortgages, they came up with a plan about uh, set up the help, the 2000 bucks they're giving to, every, um, to everyone who, is not, uh, who doesn't earn any income. Correct. So the biggest mispresentation about the deferred mortgages was that they didn't tell you that the mortgage didn't stop. The mortgage, it's ticking. You're stopping your payment, but the mortgage in the back end, it's keep ticking. So the interest rate, rate you know, it's keep calculating one after month all the time. And the worst part about the whole thing is, it's not just the interest rate is calculating it. Because by the time you're paying your mortgage, you're paying uh, 
like in every mortgage payment, it's a part, uh, half, half go to your principal and half go to your interest. So anytime when you're paying your principal, like in your payment, you know, principal goes down because you're paying a certain amount of money into your principal. So you, you, your principal goes down, the interest is calculated based on, on the new principal and goes up. Uh, just to give, simplify the whole thing. Let's say if you have a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, right? And your monthly payment will be around 470, 500 bucks. So 250 goes to pre-principal, 250 goes to the interest rates. Okay. If, uh, if you look at it that way, and uh, let's say, come up with a scenario, come up with a scenario that uh, your mortgage is in, uh, you pick up the mortgage last year in uh, May 1st, and you've been through one year through the mortgage, and now you have four years left to, uh, uh, to pay it off in the five-year term. So if you do that, then pretty much you're gonna say, in the end of the five years, if you keep paying your mortgage um, regularly, like every month, in the five-year term, you're gonna be 87,000, the balance of your mortgage. If you defer your mortgages, defer your payments for five, for six months, pretty much, that was the maximum period of time they, they kind of rely, the six months. Correct. Your interest, it's keep clicking. So now, it's not just the interest is clicking, your principal doesn't go anywhere. So what means that your principal goes up, the interest goes back on your principal. So if you have a 900, you're gonna have 900, 250. Then 900, 500, then I have a 750, then 900, 350. So once it really comes back to the end, if you have a deferred payments for six months, after five year term, again, depends on the banks, everybody calculated a little bit different, getting up some, some of them ending up uh, there upon amortization for 25 years. Some of them, they wanted to end it up on the five year term. The end of the five year term, in the first case, you are owning 87,000. In the second case, you're gonna be pretty much on 98,000, pretty much the same amount of the mortgage you actually bought at the beginning. Wow. So it was the saving, there is no saving at all. Uh, it just adds up and it's a cost. So and that means that means for the client of yours who wanted to do the deferral and go to Europe, they will actually end up paying extra money on the mortgage and extra money yeah. on the travel of Europe. So they will have to find a way how to make those extra money somewhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you look at an average mortgage in Canada, which is around 400, 400,000, that's an average size of the mortgage right now. Um, the way we'll calculate the cost monthly of, uh, of that kind of mortgage is 175 per 100,000. This is how much it will cost in the end of five-year term. Yeah. So, for example, it's 700 times six months. So it's coming to whatever, five, 6,000, it comes to the end. So it's we're coming to the conclusion that if you do want to defer your mortgage, really think about that. If that is your last option, maybe you should proceed. If not, then just call Eco and he will help you with that. Exactly. <laughs> Call Eco like I did and arrange the coffee with Eco and say, Eco, listen, this is the situation. Let's find a solution. And I'm pretty sure that the furrow is not going to be one of the options. You're going to find so many different ways to help. <laughs> yeah, so we, we did a lot of those. And uh, what happened, though, what we tried to do is uh, we extend the amortization. So we did a refinancing pretty much. Uh, if, you're a, if, you're, if you are someone who bought a house, let's say, five, ten years from now, the amortization came down to 20 to 25 years. Now, if you're refinancing, you're able to push the amortization to 30 years. And that's how you, you know, pretty much your monthly payments gonna come in pretty significantly lower. You shrink your monthly payments, exactly. exactly. And your cash flow is pretty active. So you're more, more uh, comfortable with your cash flow on the payments. And then we've done a lot of those and it's much easier to do that. Uh, there was other, other ways we, we did already, we increased the if situation allows, then we put a line of credits, we you know, get a lot of QOX products and stuff like that, just to help people to kind of go through the whole situation. Honestly, luckily, I think so that in the next couple of months, we're gonna, we're gonna go through the whole deal, so everything's gonna be over. So it didn't last too long, it's not gonna last six months, I hope it's gonna end up like a three, four months, and oh. we move forward. So, I was reading the last uh, statistic from um, pretty much the banks and then uh, they were saying that the first two weeks, they get the most application for the mortgages. And it was a quite a bit. 
But at the time, but that happened right after that, I guess the people realized what deferred mortgage means and they stopped doing it. I had a few clients of mine, they kind of like call me and so listen, I sent a request for deferred mortgages, what do you think? When I explained the whole situation, they said, oh, you know what? You know, no, I got a bit, call them and then cancel this. And I said, yeah, call them, you don't need it. <laughs> like, why do you need it? Because if I, what if I lost my job? If you lost your job, then yeah, you can go for it. But if you haven't lost your job, then why are you doing it? Correct. Correct. So, that's that, people yes. I, I agree with you. So that, that should be definitely your last option. And thank you for sharing this. This is really educational. I, I hope <laughs> this helps someone who listened this. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope so too. Yeah. So um, you know what? That the whole um uh, how do I say, like a farm or the whole thing that was going on for the firm mortgages. It was, uh, it, lasted, it lasted very short. It was a couple of weeks, uh, two, three weeks. And uh, it kind of people got uh, pretty much understanding what, what it means. And now for, uh, now it's kind of like calmed down. Now we don't, we don't see too much of things. I think we're going slowly back to normal and uh, to people asking for different kind of scenarios, like mostly plan of credits, uh, refinancing, uh, amortization, pushing up and, and totally different kind of products, not, not different mortgages. And that's exactly going back to your previous consultation saying, educate yourself. So don't rush in making any decisions. Uh, when it comes to the changes, people are either get scared or they think they know everything about it. And then they rush in making decisions, which if you don't make educated decisions, that could be really costly for you. Exactly. Don't rush into something that you hear on the news. The news are not good. Yes. So it just mispresentation at the beginning. It just, I don't say it's a fake news. I would like to say it's a fake news. It just mispresented. Uh, and I always said, you know, any questions about it, give me a call, give your bank a call, give your mortgage broker a call. Anybody you work with, give them a call find out what it means, and then just make the right decision. It's all about making the right decision at the time. Just don't rush into the things. So I hope that uh, not a lot of people made the mistakes, and uh, most of the people you know, made, made the right choice and the right decision, so we'll see you at the end. <laughs>